headed out of Homestead in southern Florida, which is predominantly the agricultural area, up towards Miami. There happens to be a boat show in Miami that we can hit along the way. Um, we're going to go. They don't have any boats that we'd like to see, but we do want to see some of the boating equipment and tools that they have. Given that Miami is such a large city, we decided to stay in the southern end of Miami, just outside of, of the downtown area, so we could catch the train into the center of the city. We met a local there and he described the city really well, we thought. He said that it was a good blend between American efficiency and Hispanic artistic culture. And we really agreed. We thought the artistic um, flair of the architecture and the city really came out making a, a good balanced city which had both um, really usable city areas that were, were quite pretty to look at and comfortable to be in. Took a drive down South Beach uh, to see if we could find any roller skaters and bikinis. But Dawn was disappointed there wasn't a single guy in a bikini all the way up that road. South Beach has more than just naked volleyball players running around. It also has an art deco architecture and museum uh, back from the 60s on display. It was time for the Miami Boat Show, which is one of the largest boat shows in the world. People mover is the free people transit. I'm the pack horse today. <laughs> all right, we've now arrived. We're near the uh, water taxi, but there's all these. Large ships out here too. The cruise ship lines come in. We saw four yesterday. There were four lined up coming in. Hot, hot day. of oil burners. We're going to walk the tents to see all the new gizmos that we can find. a little bit since I was a kid. This one is $3,800 and that's not even the biggest one. situated right next to the Woody Wax booth for some reason. We found 
the sailboats, and you can tell where the sailboats are because they have masts in the air. to have a look at some of the production boats. These are the boats that are made for prim primarily the charter industry, where they have lots of bedrooms, they want to get lots of people on to cut the cost uh, down for a charter, and they're typically confined to yeah. coastal waters. Um, they're not really designed to take a beating in heavy weather uh, or for cruising around the world uh, necessarily. Uh, when you walk around on them, uh, you're continuously aware of the creaking that's going on. They're plastic boats, uh, they're not insulated, they're not particularly uh, strong, but they're very comfortable um, for short-term stays, and uh, would be really great for a holiday or something like that, or for a week, week or two with some friends on a, in a nice area. and uh, we enjoyed walking around just to get some little ideas, uh, just the little hidden things, the little gems that people come up with um, that make life more comfortable on a boat. And uh, these charter boats often have them um, all over, from champagne bottle holders to tables that you know, perform backflips and things. And um, so we, we learn a little bit going out into each different <laughs> boat. And, uh, you've, you've cracked the lens. <laughs> it's fun just uh, okay, so being we're on we're in huh? different machines, in different boats. Yeah. These uh, production boats pretty much conform to the standard uh, traditional sailboat design where you walk down maybe four, five, six steps down from the uh, cockpit down into the salon uh, inside. So you're kind of walking down into the into the darkness uh, to some extent um, and with small windows. Um, they're a little bit like uh, living in caves of, as we've heard it been said. That's not necessarily a bad thing, you know, living below the waterline, but it does prevent uh, visibility from inside the sailboat. So if you want to do a perform lookout, um, as would be critical um, in any sort of serious passage making, then um, all lookouts have to be performed from the cockpit area, out in the cold and the rain and the, and the storms. back we found a much smaller water taxi to bring us into downtown. It was a little pink water taxi which held about maybe 20 people versus the catamaran we took over which held maybe about 200 people. several days uh, and we were parked next to a hospital so they were concerned but we were still alive after the boat
Ocho, we heard that there was a brand new Garcia 45 sailboat uh, sailing over the Atlantic Ocean and would be in the Bahamas over the next few weeks. Uh, emailing the uh, owner of the Garcia, we discovered that it was going to be in Nassau, but rather than go directly to Nassau and wait for three weeks, we decided to break up our stay in the Bahamas by staying in Freeport for a week before moving to Nassau. We were welcomed by one of the locals who immediately made us feel very at home in our apartment. Some lovely people in the marina, uh, in particular this uh, Scottish couple who are working very hard on the boat maintenance. of the marina was nice for Dawn who was trying to finish her latest iPhone and iPad app. Security was very tight in the marina and there were constant patrols for rodents. We decided to take a day to drive the entire length of the Grand Bahama Island just to see what the eastern tip looked like and stop at little spots along the way. And halfway uh, towards the tip of the island we found a nice place called the Garden of Groves and we stopped there but I made the mistake of saying something bad about Dawn's well, mother. Say it for yourself. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Yeah, right. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. found a little curly-tailed lizard which is indigenous to the Bahamas. Heading east again along the island, we came across a lot of hurricane damage from Hurricane Matthew and uh, entire forests have been devastated. And uh, right out in the middle of nowhere we came across some very strange looking buildings that we thought were perhaps where the CIA were performing alien experiments or perhaps making a new kind of nerve gas. And this is the easternmost tip of the Grand Bahama Island and it is very remote. So we've driven the entire length of the Grand Bahama Island. Uh, tomorrow we're going to fly out to Nassau to hopefully go and see the boat that we're intending to build. So uh, don't miss next episode.